Hi everyone, and welcome to another Vayne devlog. This one's a bit special as it's our first devlog that we're putting out without a normal game update. Usually we've released game updates alongside devlogs, but the next Vayne update is looking to be very big, so we've decided to just put out a devlog to show what we're working on. We will be uploading a Canary build publicly that you can access though, but without the Champlain Valley map. More details at the end of the video. That said, as in the last devlog, Vayne Update 5 is currently out on Steam for free, so please give it a try if you haven't yet, and be sure to wishlist the base game if you haven't. The first thing we'd like to get out of the way is that we're redoing the entire Champlain Valley map. We haven't cut content or anything, but we just needed to resize the landscape so we can add better detail. The map change will let us design underground areas, like basements, caves, and bunkers easier, and will let us paint more realistic landscape. The old map size was 14.5 by 14.5 kilometers, or approximately the land area of World of Warcraft. The new map is 8 by 8 kilometers, or approximately the size of Fallout 4. This totals to 64 square kilometers. For comparison, Project Zomboid's map is slightly larger at 86 square kilometers, or about 9.2 by 9.2 kilometers. We think this is a good compromise for keeping the map interesting, but also sparse enough for long drives. I was personally a little skeptical that it would be big enough when we were first discussing this, but I tested it out and it took me about an hour of real life time to run across the entire map in a straight line, with no trees, obstacles, zombies, AI, blockages, cliffs, etc. On the new map, New Redford's shaping up nicely and feels much more like a real, rural town. Funnily enough, the new Redford on the smaller map is actually larger than the old Redford and has more unique areas, like a baseball diamond behind the fire department. It's not nearly done, but we're excited to keep working on it. With the new map, we're also testing out a new water system based on Real Engine's water. These rivers flow, have dynamic banks, merge with other water sources, etc. We can dynamically build rivers and lakes in a matter of seconds, which comes in handy when it comes to designing riverside communities. Sometimes rivers need a slight adjustment, and in the old system this took forever. It's not quite ready yet, but we'll let you know when it is. What this means for you is that you can expect slightly faster development of Vayne's world. We have added a ton of gameplay changes to Vayne since the last devlog. One of the bigger changes we've made is with the water system. Previously, all water was considered clean. Water can now come in dirty and putrid varieties. Dirty water covers water that is drinkable but contaminated with bacteria, so for example standing water, water from streams, and water in rain barrels. Putrid water is essentially undrinkable, disgusting water with physical contaminants, so that includes waters from swamps, portable toilets, etc. Dirty water can be boiled on a heat source to convert it to clean water, while putrid water can be filtered to convert it to dirty water. Drinking dirty water has an elevated chance for your character to become ill and will increase your character's stress level. Drinking putrid water almost certainly causes your character to become ill and increases nausea, stress, etc. The idea is that you can drink putrid water if you're in an emergency situation, so if you're dying of thirst, yeah, you can drink the toilet water, but it's going to come at a pretty heavy cost. Putrid water does have its uses, though. For example, we're planning on allowing you to use it as fertilizer for crops, which will work better than just watering them. More details on that to come. We've also added temperature to water. Water and fluids in general can freeze, at which point they can't be drank. Water will have to be warmed to above zero to drink it. This means in winter, characters may become dependent on snow for water, as rivers and lakes can freeze over. We've also added insulation to fluid containers. Insulated flasks can keep their contents hot or cold for much longer than standard containers. We also added a check ammo key. As with most of our art, we're using placeholders for now, so they just use the reload animations for weapons. We noticed some community members wanted a way to check ammo without opening the inventory or reloading, so there you go. House alarms now flash when active. We saw a bunch of YouTubers being unable to find the source of alarms, so this should make it slightly easier. We've added coffee, tea, and hot chocolate to Vayne. You can make these by boiling water with coffee or tea bags or hot chocolate mix on a stove. These have anti-stress and pro-energy effects. You now need a lighter to use cannabis or cigarettes. You can control click on an item to quick eat or quick drink it. This was a community suggestion that we thought was a pretty simple change. We've done a bunch of changes to locks and lock picking. The first thing players will notice is that lock picking is significantly more difficult than before. 
We've also added enhanced locks, which are just lockpick resistant and more difficult to pick. We added code locks, which function like normal locks but require a passcode to be input. This can be useful as there's no need to carry a key and multiple people can use the lock. You can now lock containers with any of the above lock types. We've got a couple more lock types planned as well. Finally, you can remove locks from a door with a screwdriver. Previously you had to replace the lock with another one, but this one lets you entirely remove the components. You can then reuse the lock elsewhere. Moving on from locks, we've added a item placement system to Vayne. This lets you place items down with precision, compared to just dropping them and hoping that they land in the correct places. These also save, so you can decorate your base a little if you want. There are a couple special placeable items too. You can pitch a tent and unroll a sleeping bag, which you can sleep on. More to come. We've added a dirtiness system, so like wetness, characters can become dirty over time. Dirtiness increases stress primarily and causes you to be less visible to zombies. Clothes are also now affected by wetness and dirtiness, so you'll need to wash them periodically. Wearing dirty or wet clothes causes you to become dirty or wet, no surprise there. We've done more work on vehicles. Cars now have ignitions and keys that are required to start the vehicle. They also have headlights which can be used to see at night, and radios which function exactly like long-range radio items and share the same programming. We've added vehicle impact and brake skid sound effects. And finally, you can now use weapons in vehicles in case you want to do drive-bys or cause a distraction. We've also fixed vehicles in multiplayer. That means that probably by update 6, we should have some sort of system in for getting a vehicle without cheating. We've added player climbing and vaulting. There are some minor issues with it right now, but it's in a place where we think we can release it. The system should let you preserve momentum and climb to places where you can't jump to. You will, however, need enough stamina and agility skill to do these. You can now fill up tubs and sinks with water. This is useful in planning in case the water systems get damaged or cease functioning as the world of Vayne ages. We've done a quick pass on firearms' underwater behavior. As with real firearms, most can be discharged underwater but are ineffective outside of point-blank ranges. Underwater firearm discharges also have their own sound and particle effect. Grenades and explosives put on burners or inside stoves now explode. It was a community suggestion that we're very happy that we implemented. You can now cut your hair with scissors to change your appearance. This can also be done to other players. You can also cut NPCs' hair, but I don't think they'd be very happy if you did it without permission. There's now a grab and equip option to pick up and immediately use items on the ground, another community suggestion. This is good if you're in a tricky situation or a rush. You can now copy and paste characters from the character creation menu as plain text. This makes sharing and backing up your character's appearances very easy. You can now open parcels with your bare hands if you have any strength skill. This was much requested by the community and apparently everyone who's posted vain gameplay on YouTube. We've added exercising to vain. There's only the one pull-up bar for now, but it lets you raise your strength and endurance skills and decrease stress at the cost of thirst, hunger, and tiredness. If you work out for too long, you'll also suffer pain and eventually be damaged. We're looking into ways to exercise without equipment like push-ups or sit-ups, and if you have any suggestions, be sure to leave a comment here or on our Discord server. The map UI has received a pass. Markers are now color-coded, and you can place your own map markers or waypoints. You can also select map markers to see the location name and a brief description if there is one. Okay, onto the art side of things. There's been a bit of work. Uh, first, we've added some better quality arms to Vin. Like I said earlier, we've also been experimenting with Unreal's built-in water system. We've been working on getting water to look a little bit better and less flat, as well as tweaking how rivers and lakes blend into the terrain around them. We've added a wetness and dirtiness shader to characters that makes them shiny when wet and gross when dirty, both for a bit of immersion and so other players can tell the state of you. We've done some weather particle improvements. Particles now work properly at very high speeds, which will be useful for cars and other vehicles. We've made some movement and animation tweaks. Characters now have more momentum when moving and are slower to accelerate. In addition, their feet now turn when they do, so there's no more gliding around. We've made some changes to the fire effect on zombies and other objects. 
Fire now spreads and zombies can ignite each other. We're currently thinking about how fire should affect the world and spread to objects in the world outside of zombies, but more on that later. We fixed a ton of bugs that have been present in 0.005. These include errors like crawling zombies suddenly leaping over things or gestures not working. We've changed how containers save. In 0.005, containers essentially were only supposed to save if they were player storage. The point is to be able to continue to find loot even as the game world ages. Now, all containers everywhere save in single player. In multiplayer, we're going to make this a server option as some server hosts may want looting to be viable no matter what time a player joins. Under the hood, there's been a lot of work. First, we've redone the code for workbenches. This lets us not only use fluids in workbenches, but lets us have fluids as a result of blueprints and recipes, like coffee or tea. We can also now use any number of ingredients and tools as inputs, and receive any number of results out. This is going to be useful in systems like chemistry or drug workbenches, or advanced workbenches, and will generally let us make more complex blueprints. We've been working on a new house and building system for level designers. This lets us place houses and buildings faster than before, and wire them up to the electrical and water grids instantly. The end goal is to take the time it takes to set up and decorate a house down to a couple minutes. The interesting part of level design is crafting unique areas and stories told through the world, but towns do need houses, and so we hope that this is going to help speed that up. Also under the hood, we've redone a lot of the usable system. You can now use multiple different things from the same menu. For example, while looking at a car door, you can now use the door or reach out of the car and use whatever's behind it. Both options will now show up. Another example is with locks. You can use the door, or the lock itself, or both at the same time. This cleans up a lot on the code side of things and will reduce bugs in the future. Generally speaking, we've done a bunch of quality of life changes. We can't list them all because there's just too many, but as examples, you can press space to exit a chair quickly, and we've reduced the amount of recoil on our firearms. The main menu's new game button now opens a menu with options. We've listed the most common gameplay changing options here, such that players can tweak how they play without needing to look up a command and open the console. We've added a settings menu option to enable virtual shadow maps. These are a new Unreal Engine 5 feature that produce crisper, high resolution, soft shadows. Like Lumen, this isn't really supported by us and isn't really meant to be a default, but it does cause shadows to look a little bit nicer. It will tank your performance though, fair warning. This one's meant for people playing with 4090s. We've also added a dropdown for language selection because many people were unable to access their desired language in-game. On the not totally done yet side, we've added trains to Vane. They follow a track and are pretty simple. You can start and stop them, reverse them, etc. Right now they're also bound to a single track, but in the future we're going to add track switching. They can also become derailed if you try and drive the locomotive onto a broken rail or collide two trains. We suggest against it for the health of your character. And of course, you can build on these to make a mobile base. We wouldn't consider otherwise. We've started work on gore holes. Kind of a weird name, but I don't really know what else to call them. This is the system used in Left 4 Dead 2 for their gore, where organs, skeletal structure, and muscle detail become visible when zombies receive damage. It's work in progress because we don't have the art yet for the guts. Soon, hopefully. Finally, we've been working on friendly NPCs. A branching dialogue system is being worked on with characters being able to execute skill checks, receive quests, etc. We're also working on the animation side of things, including facial animation, gesticulation, and lip syncing. This is still heavily work in progress, though. And that's it for another vain devlog. Like I said at the start of this video, there is no main branch update available yet, but we do promise we'll get one out once everything's tidied up. For now, we'll be uploading builds under the Canary branch of Vane until the main game is ready. You can access the Canary branch by following instructions in the description. It won't have the main map in it, but it should work for testing purposes. We'll continue updating Canary frequently, as we always have. If you haven't yet, please join our Discord and wishlist Vane on Steam. We really don't know much about who's interested in the game outside of people that talk to us, but we do read every single comment we get, and generally, I personally respond to people as fast as I can on Discord. As for wishlisting, it's sort of like a survey, and we use it to judge how many people are interested in the game. Anyways, thanks a ton for watching, thank you for your amazing support, and we'll see you on the next one.